Hello. If you're new to gardening, if you're new to growing vegetables in buckets or bags or beds at home, if you're new to this channel, this is a video I think you're going to like. It's one I shot about five years ago and it shows me growing carrots in a bucket from start to finish. It shows me preparing the bucket, preparing the soil to go in the bucket. It shows me sowing the carrot seeds thinly. This is most important. If you've got a confined space that you grow carrots in like a bucket or a bag, you need to sow them thinly. It shows me doing that. And then the video finishes with a carrot reveal. So it's a start to finish video. You see, how I grow carrots in buckets start to finish. And then at the end of that video, I've tagged on um, a little bit of footage of me and my dog Molly. Uh, Molly's gone on ahead now, um, but it's always nice to look back and, and to reminisce. And I know through your correspondences that there are lots of gardeners out there who've lost pets over the years that I've been posting these videos and I know how hard it feels um, so I hope you enjoy this video uh, it lasts about half an hour so it's not a short video but you will see growing carrots in a bucket start to finish enjoy the video Hello, in this video I'm going to make some compost for carrots. I'm then going to sow some carrots and then I'm going to show you a carrot reveal at the end of the video. So this is a carrots from start to finish video. This is the compost we're going to start with. This is the compost that I would normally use for growing potatoes in, in these pots. Um, it's homemade compost. It stood out on a raised bed to overwinter. Um, I put some in this pot and let it dry out for a couple of days. And now we're going to clean it up so that we can use it for carrots. There'll be a lot of obstructions in this compost that carrots won't like. Uh, it's basically made up of um, soil from molehills, um, composted chopped seaweed and leaves, and some forest bark and wood chip and it's the forest bark and wood chip that we really need to take out. That will be okay for potatoes, but no good for carrots. When I do this, I'm going to use a number of bits and pieces that are recycled. I think you can see two now. Okay, that's your head start. Through the course of this video, either use your memory or grab yourself a pen and paper now, but there's going to be lots of bits and pieces in this video of recycled material that you can use in your garden. Here's the first two bits. You know what I'm going to use that for now, don't you? You want to take some bits out of here. Let's do it. This shouldn't take long. Now this soil is quite loose, so I'm not too sure that this riddle I'm using would be strong enough for, for anything much more than what I'm putting through here. Um, so be careful if you do use one of these, it doesn't break on you. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put that to one side because we're not going to waste that. Okay, carrots are not going to grow through bits of stick. Uh, they're just not going to do that, they'll, um, they'll fork, so we need this out. So we'll take this out. And we'll bring it back into play later. Mm. 
Okay, how good is that? Come on, how good is that? Look at that. <laughs> how good is that? That's a bit of good compost. Um, there's no peat in here. For those of you that prefer the gardeners don't use peat. Uh, and there's no green waste in here. There's only what I've collected from the environment. So from molehills, so in leaves. Come on, this is homegrown veg. Okay, so just to make sure we've got enough goodness in here, we're going to add one or two things. So we've taken the obstructions out, we're going to add some blood fish and bone. Okay. I like blood fish and bone because it's a balanced uh, it's a balanced fertiliser, it's organic and there's no lumps in it, look it's powder. So we'll add some blood fish and bone. What else we got here? Okay. My mate brings me this so I've got to use it. Coffee grounds. Okay, coffee grounds are a neutral fertiliser, worms love it apparently. And we like worms at homegrown veg. So we'll put some coffee grounds in. Okay. Because this is carrot fertilizer, it needs to, uh, sorry, because this is carrot compost, we need an open structure. And the best way to open a structure out of a compost is to add some sand. So we'll add some sand. Now there's no exact quantities here. All you've got to be confident of is that you're just sending this compost in the right direction. Okay. And this is a dry farm unit a dry farmyard manure called 6x. It's very fibrous and very smelly. <laughs> okay, I'll just show you how fibrous that is. Okay, so that's our 6x. So we'll pop that in. That's it made. Right, all it needs is a bit of this. How's that? That didn't take long, did it? Right. Let's fill a pot. Let me see. This is all that rough material that we took out the bottom, remember? We can pop it in the bottom of the pot for the carrots because the carrot roots or should I say the bottom of the carrot will not reach the bottom of this pot. Some of the long thin roots might, but the carrot will not. And if a carrot doesn't reach the bottom, what we've just put in there can't affect it, can it? It can't uh, cause the root to uh, fall. Right, let's fill this up. Now then, if you have a look at your packet, your carrot seed packet, it'll probably tell you to sow your carrot seeds half an inch deep. So if we were to press the surface of that down so that it's half an inch below the rim of this pot, sow the seeds on top, then fill the pot, they're all in at half inch. Would you agree? Yeah, of course you would. So all these seeds will be planted at the same depth. Okay, the hell's that looking? A bit more compost I think. There should be just enough left in this barret to top this pot off.
that looks about right to me. Looks about half an inch down. Length of my fingernail. Okay, time to sow some carrots. Uh, the seed I'm going to be sowing today is a pelleted seed, uh, as opposed to uh, your normal carrot seed. Uh, it's much bigger, uh, there's more guarantee that it'll germinate. Uh, it's easier seen and it's easier picked up. Um, but if you have any dexterity or eyesight issues, I'm going to show you a neat trick that will help you around that. It works with pelleted seeds and it works with non-pelleted seeds. Um, I took some photos yesterday, I planted some carrots yesterday uh, and I'll, I'll insert those into the video uh, and you should be able to see the difference between a pelleted seed that's, that's planted and a non-pelleted seed that's planted. And when I say you should be able to see the difference, you might not see the difference because carrot seeds tend to be quite small. Okay, one of the things you must have is a piece of old netting somewhere that you can cut a circle out of. You must have. Whatever you do, don't try and buy this, just make it. Make it out of something. If you want to know how big these holes are, they're that big. So I think they're about three quarters of an inch. Uh, but it doesn't matter. What matters is it's going to produce us a grid pattern on the top of that pot that'll help us sow our carrot seeds thinly. So it doesn't matter what size these are, you decide, small or bigger, uh, just alter your spacings accordingly. Okay, we'll just pop this on here, this is just to give me a platform to work from. That's a piece of slate by the way. Bottle top with some water in. That might have been up a jar of coffee. Whoops. We need this matchstick. And these are all pelleted seeds. Okay. Let's pop a few of those in there. Close that up. I'll try and offer this to the camera so you can see these any better. They're rolling all over the place, maybe not. Oh, they're all in the bottom. You probably, I don't know if you can see those, they're all in the bottom. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to put one seed in every other square. Now spacing isn't that critical. I hope you can see that. One carrot seed planted. Every time I dip into that, I'm picking a carrot seed up. And these are so easily seen, um, you don't have issues about have you put one in, have you not put one in. Okay, that's the first row done. It goes with the second row.
Now it's important these seeds are dry uh, when you do this because that's what enables this wet matchstick um, to pick them up. Because the seeds dry, um, it adheres to the bottom of the matchstick. So if your seeds are slightly wet, um, you sometimes don't want to do that. Anyway, get the gist of this. I'm going to knock this camera off now um, and finish sewing this pot. And then what I'll do is I'll show you what we do next. Okay. And then we can move on to the good bit, which is actually seeing the carrot reveal. Okay. Just let me put a couple more in and then you've seen enough. Last one. Voila. Now that didn't take any more than a couple of minutes and it's a job that you can do indoors if you like, if it's too windy outdoors do it indoors. Um, okay. Is that making it any better? I don't know. Okay these guys are uh, there. Let me take this off. How's that? They look evenly spaced to you. Now then, we're going to give these guys a little uh, water, but not a lot, a light spray. We don't want to knock them all over the place, and we just want them to be moist. Okay, there's got to be at least 50 or so carrots sewn in there now, all evenly spaced. So as you'll see when I take this, uh, when I do the reveal, I don't take individual carrots. I take them all at once. Uh, if you take individual carrots, it leaves a way in for the carrot fly. So you might want to take two or three carrots. But once you crush those leaves, if the carrot flies about, it'll smell that crushed leaf. It'll loam in on your pot and it'll be straight down the hole you've just left where you pull your carrots out. So it's best to take a full pot. And these are only small pots anyway. Okay, so this is the uh, compost we're going to cover with. This is the stuff that was left over. And if some of these seeds do move, it's not, it's not a, you know, it's not the end of the world, is it? The important thing is that you make the attempt to sow your seeds thinly. And the way to do that is with a grid pattern. It definitely is. Okay, so if we can get that up, the level with the top of the pot, they're all sewn half an inch deep. So we haven't got some it an inch, some a quarter of an inch, they're all half an inch deep. Would you agree? Yeah, of course you would. Oh, how many things have you counted that's recycled? Where you at? Right, and so we'll just apply a bit more pressure with this polystyrene pizza base onto the top of this pot. And the other thing this does is it makes sure your seeds have got a good contact. So if there's any, any voids in there, any holes in the compost or whatever, and the seed falls into it, this will close it up. How's that? How's that? Looks like a little more required. And the job's a good one, as they say. The job's a good one. Come on, that's level with that top. That is level with that top. That'll do me, mate. No, it won't. A bit more around here. Come on, Rob. Let's get it right. Particularly soon as we're on camera. <laughs> Don't want to tell you one thing and do another. 
it'll have to be level now because I've used all the compost that I set aside. So it'll have to be level. How's that? That's it. Now what I propose to do now is, because it's early in the year, uh, we'll stand this in the garage for at least ooh, three weeks, maybe four weeks, till we see anything. There's probably no need to water those seeds. This compost was quite damp because it came off the raised bed and there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of rain lately. Um, and then when we see the green shoots of growth, we'll have to move this outside. Uh, and what is it? Three months after that? Four months? I don't know. We harvest these carrots. But I'm going to show you an harvest now. So stick with it. This is a pot of carrots called Artemis. Artemis is a pelleted seed. It was th sown thinly in this pot using a grid pattern. These carrots have been in this pot now for about just over four months. Let's drop the lot. Let's see what she's got. This is Artemis. Molly's just lying off camber at the moment in the shade because it's a lovely warm day here. Yeah? Although there's loads of rain forecast, but it's warm today, so. But I think she'll probably make an appearance once she gets the smell of these carrots. Right, let's see what we've got here. Well, we've got some carrots, haven't we? Oh. Now, I think what I've been finding as I've been doing these reveals is this particular carrot will grow that sort of length. But the tap root usually finishes up at the bottom of the pot and I have noticed that some of these roots have been coming through the bottom of the pot. So presumably this is as big as these carrots get. But hey, we're not growing short carrots here, we're growing carrots to eat. Um, so we're not really bothered how big they are as long as they're big enough to eat. And as long as there's a few of them. This is something that um, I don't often get. In fact, I don't think I've had it with any carrots that I've revealed this year, and I can't recall it last year either. A forked carrot. Uh, because I make this uh, homemade carrot compost, I'm very careful to try and get any obstructions out of there. That's the usual cause of a split uh, a forked root. But anyway, we've got one. Let's see what else we've got in here. carrots everywhere. Now if you notice this bottom is going to fall away because the carrots haven't got down that the smaller roots are in there but they're not strong enough to hold the base of this compost on so it should just fall away like that which it has done. Okay I can see the roots of the carrots they probably got to the bottom of the pot and through the bottom of the pot um, but obviously this isn't a, a long variety it's not a short variety it's an eating carrot, um, and with the look of this, I think we've done okay. How about that? It's our usual wiggly worm. Right. Okay, so. We'll start at this split one, I'm going to turn this bunch round before I bump the soil off. So we'll start at the split one, and we'll just go around nice and slowly. Well I hope you got that, I hope you can see from that, but this looks a, a tremendous pot of carrots. Anyway, let's bump it off. Oh, look at that, come on! 
this looks about the best I've done so far this year. Right, hold on Mull. As you know Mull likes a carrot so we best find a small one. We'll give these a wash off. Now that's a small domestic bucket and as you can see I've got more carrots than one to go in there from a 10 inch pot. I'm having to tuck them in. Right. Excuse me, Molly. Well that's a barrel full isn't it? <laughs> that's a barrel full of carrots! Isn't it? Blimey! Right, we'll give, the, we'll give Molly this number one. Oh darn, oh darn. We'll give you a number one. As Molly's got number one, we'll count these shall we? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, oh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. How good's that? 31 carrots from a 10 inch pot. Um, and this pot didn't need thinned out at all. Bear in mind I sold these thinly. All I'll do is I'll lay these out. Um, let me have a look at them again and then say bye bye. How good is that? All those from a small 10 inch pot, no bigger than a domestic water bucket. We are definitely happy with this, aren't we Mark? You'll be happy when I give you another one of these carrots. Come here, last one. Here, come round here. Good girl. Right, so this is homegrown veg, signing out. <laughs>